Hi, this is Jilly, Radio Prepper. I just got a kit in the mail from Conga Products. It's a Fox 3 20 meter QRP kit. It's designed to fit in an Altoids tin can, and that's what I'm gonna put it in. It's a very simple kit, it's crystal controlled. It does, however, have a VXO, so you can tune a bit around the frequency. It does have a side tone, that's awesome. It doesn't have a keyer, but I don't really care about that. Its direct competition would of course be a Rockmite, and uh, this one is a little bit cheaper, but the reason I got interested in it is because uh, all the connectors are on top of the board, including the antenna connector and everything else. So you don't have to drill the Altoids tin. And of course you can close the lid and your radio will be uh, essentially in a Faraday cage. Power should be about a watt or maybe a bit less. It's CW only, so Morse code only of course. And it should be a quick and easy build. Now this is the kind of radio that I would put in my bug out bag or even my EDC everyday carry. Along with uh, handheld VHF and UHF, this gives you access to actually HF frequencies and extremely long range. All that powered by a few AA cells. I'll add a, uh, an unfed uh, half wave antenna, so 10 meters long with a transformer and that will make a very, very small kit. Then we'll see about uh, operating the radio in the field and uh, in which circumstances we would use something like this. The kit has five stages and every stage requires a bit of verification in between. The first stage is the uh, audio amplifier. The uh, circuit board is pretty nice and does have the shape of an Altoids tin. I'm really liking this build. There is no difficulty, no stress involved, very simple kit. This would make actually an excellent first kit to build. Here I'm soldering the last capacitors for stage 1. The audio plug is a simple jack soldered on the circuit board. Now for the power supply we have to use this uh, dual pin connector. Testing stage 1, I have a little bit of hiss and I'm going to touch the potentiometer here. Scratchy, scratchy. It works, no surprise. Very simple kit. Transistor 2 is supposed to be a BC212 and it's a BC237. So, but that was the only one left in the bag and I'm gonna try that. Well, the relay is supposed to be clicking here and it's not. <sighs> I suspect uh, transistor 2, which is not what's on the manual, so maybe there's been a mistake there. I received a replacement transistor from Dennis at Kanga Products. And you know, those kits are put together by hand, so hair hey, mistakes do happen. And uh, he was very quick to uh, mail it to me. So now I soldered it and I'm ready to test. And of course, I have my Morski here and you're going to hear the relay click this time. So King Circuit works. All right, I just added the uh, components for the side tone, which are here, and... Sounds pretty good. You know what's great about this kit is that uh, you have to do it by stages. And all the stages come into those little plastic baggies. And they are separated from each other, so every stage you open a bag. And uh, it's really, really simple. I'm really liking this kit. Well, the uh, oscillator parts are in. I'm not going to test it right now because I'm in a hurry. <laughs> I know I shouldn't do that, but I'll move on to uh, stage 5, the uh, power amplifier and filter. When you're soldering uh, polystyrene capacitors like this one, you have to be really quick, simply because they, uh, they can burn up if you heat them up too long. But they are more stable than uh, ceramic capacitors. Ah, uh, my vision is starting to go. Ah, uh, that's a pain. Let's solder it. The only thing that wasn't super easy in this kit is to wind 14 turns on this tiny uh, bead and uh, you just have to take your time. Regular toroids are pretty easy to wind and I never understood the hoopla about uh, you know not wanting to do so. Of course some people have disabilities and you know we get older and it it becomes much harder to do. My problem is my vision but for these no problem. This is one turn, every time the wire goes through the core, it's one turn, so one, two, 
three. And if you can count, you can make a toroid. I just have to go up to 16 on this one. The way I strip the leads on the toroids is simply using a pair of pliers, but you have to be very careful as it's easy to break them. Now, I prefer the colored wire because, of course, this one is uh, translucent, so you can't really see uh, the insulation you're removing. That's the problem. All right, all finished. Uh, I really like the fact that all the connectors are on top of the board which means that when I put it into uh, the Altoid stin, it's going to be in its own little uh, Faraday cage. Now I'm not sure if it's receiving because I don't have an antenna plugged in, but it certainly is transmitting. Awesome! I'm testing this with my uh, Weber MTR, which is going to transmit and we'll see if the uh, Fox 3 does receive. And it does, so receiver and transmitter work. It certainly has a chirp. Gives it a little uh, retro sound. <laughs> You'd think uh, it would be a tube uh, transmitter, but no. After adjusting the uh, receiving offset, uh, the receiver seems to be doing pretty well. Now, of course, I have to try it with a real antenna. I cut a little bit of hard plastic that I'm going to put at the bottom of the Altoids case here. And that will allow me to put the radio inside without the bottom. You know, these um, soldering points uh, can be pretty sharp, so I don't want that to make any uh, short. And here we go. Instant Faraday cage. This radio is protected. And here we are at the uh, Vaugrenier Park but it's just jam-packed. I'm gonna have to find some uh, quieter place. The problem is that I need something to attach my mast to and I don't have anything. This should do it. I just need to find a place for my antenna. I'm using the uh, QRP Guys tri-band vertical antenna. It's only a quarter wave on 20 meters, but the radials really do help. All right, here's my antenna installation. You can see the mast here with the radiating wire. And the uh, QRP guys tri-bander is set, of course, to 20 meters. I'm not expecting miracles, of course. Uh, this is a very simple radio. Uh, I did hear some faint signals, but uh, nothing really uh, very strong. I heard some uh, Middle Eastern music. Very faint, but I heard it clearly. Hmm. Huh. So, no contact. I can't say I'm really surprised, but I was really hoping to make at least one contact. Now those radios, crystal controlled with very little power, are not a good choice for survival radios, obviously. But they're a lot of fun to build and to use and, you know, it's the chase that matters, right? But again, for serious stuff, I would use a radio that's frequency agile, where you can browse the frequencies and it has at least, you know, two to three watts. Uh, this one has probably much less than one watt, but I was hurt pretty far though. I would still carry one when nothing else is possible because it beats nothing any day. Now, if anyone doubts the efficiency of a quarter wave antenna on 20 meters with four radials, well, proof is it works extremely well. And the QRP guys tri-bander works extremely well. Of course, on 20 meters, it doesn't use the uh, two, uh, any of the two toroids or the switches that are on the board, so you could just make one simply using a, an antenna socket and a little bit of wire. I was expecting the receiver to be more sensitive, but I suspect uh, there is something wrong with it. Maybe I messed up something during the build, I'm not sure, but I should get a lot more volume, uh, a lot more hiss uh, at full volume, and I don't. Dennis, let me know uh, if this is normal, or uh, I should be expecting more volume out of the receiver. You know, I spent a nice afternoon in the park, 
It was sunny, I was surrounded by trees, and I had a good time. And that beats television any day. Have a good one.